Okay. Hey, Chris, uh, how do you compensate for the loss of Caden Stearns and uh, what type of replacement strategy do you have for him? No, well, uh, you know, Caden's missed a, a game already this year and uh, BJ Foster, who's played a lot, uh, will, will step in uh, just like he did uh, before. Uh, I believe it was the OU game. And uh, BJ's a, a veteran player, he's played a lot of uh, snaps here, a really pretty good football player. So uh, he'll, he'll step in and take over. And if I could just ask you the, the emotional devastation of losing that game, uh, how does that affect uh, uh, getting a team ready for uh, being out of the Big 12 race? It's uh, well, you know, I've, I've been uh, through this before and uh, it's never easy. Uh, you know, when, when you invest a lot and you work so hard, uh, when it doesn't happen, it, it's very difficult. But uh, I, I think uh, it, it tests your character is what it does. And I think we have really good character in this locker room on this football team. And uh, from what I have seen, you know, they, they took it really, really hard. Um, but uh, so far this week, um, based on the, the, the meetings and the practices on Tuesday, they bounced back and uh, have refocused and uh, have gone back to work and ready to go finish this thing off the right way. Chip, go ahead. Chris, um, where, um, you know, always checking in on the improvement, where have you seen, you know, the most improvement and, and even specific players you're, you're kind of most proud of for the steps that they've taken and what they've, um, you know, overcome? Well, I, I think we've improved in, in, in every area defensively, uh, in my opinion. You know, you, you uh, could easily just look at the numbers and, um, you know, not really pay attention to the, the trends, uh, so to speak, and, and probably say otherwise. But if you look how we, we have been trending as the season's gone on, um, we're playing some of our best football right now. Um, is it good enough to, to uh, win that game last Saturday? No, it's not. We, we had a couple plays that uh, we could have played better that would have made a difference in that game. But uh, I think we've improved in a lot of areas uh, defensively. Um, and uh, I think we're trending in the right way, and we need to finish it off uh, here over the next two weeks the right way. You know, in, in terms of specific players, um, I think everybody's improved. Uh, like anybody that's uh, been a starter for us or, or playing significant snaps, they have all improved. They've improved their fundamentals. They've improved their understanding of, of, of our defense. They've improved uh, their understanding of offensive football and how people are going to attack us. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased. Um, I'm not I'm not happy uh, that we didn't win Saturday or last Friday, but I'm pleased with the progress that we continue to make and uh, the way we are trending on defense. What um, with you know, Sam Cosme opting out to get ready for the NFL draft. If anyone has a legit claim to that, it's probably Joseph Osai. What, what have you, have you had any conversations with him about, you know, whether he should finish the season or, or is he just all systems go? Uh, I have not had any conversations uh, with, with, with Joseph. Um, you know, I, I look at it, that that's their uh, decision. That's their individual and family uh, decision. That's not a decision for me to make. Um, we, we support uh, our players and, and what they think is best for them. Um, and uh, they go through the process that they need to and talk to the people that they need to. And uh, Joseph has been here. Uh, he's been all in uh, since day one and, and continues to be. But, uh, guys, that's just the world of college football right now. You know, uh, there's two things that, that people just need to, to, to understand happen in college football, recruiting decommitments and, and uh, opt-outs uh, happen. And they happen all around the country. And, you know, as a, as a coach, um, I'm here to support our players. And, um, you know, regardless of the situation or how they came to that, that uh, decision, I'm here to support our guys. Chris, go ahead. Chris, kind of piggybacking on Chip's question just then, um, the, it, it seems like the sky is falling around the program. But like you said, the defense has shown improvement. You guys are, are without a doubt getting better and better each and every week. How do you – get your players to focus on that instead of the outside noise of what's going to happen with Tom, what's going to happen with the coaching uh, staff. Um, the season is, you know, we're not in the running for the big 12 anymore. How do you try to get them to focus on, Hey, we're making progress. We're doing what we need to be doing. Don't worry about any of that other stuff. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not naive to the fact that uh, these guys live on their phones and they, they, they see that stuff uh, all the time. But it's just constant, uh, consistent uh, communication with these guys about where our focus and head needs to be. I'm here every day. Um, 
and, and uh, I, yeah, I know you guys follow the program, but you're not here every day. The sky is not falling inside this, this complex. Uh, we have a bunch of individuals that really enjoy coming to, to practice, coming to, to meetings. Uh, we work hard. We have fun with, with the guys. I'm speaking about the guys I'm around, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we are improving. Um, they they uh, have been uh, very coachable um, and have given us uh, everything that they, they, they have and, and everything that we've asked them to do. So that, we just continue to, to have conversation and communication about that. Um, and it's really about having pride in your performance and, and uh, being a pro and finishing what you've started the right way. And, you know, that's what our guys have been focused on. And, and uh, you know, I don't anticipate that changing. But again, it's 2020. Who knows? Anwar, you're up. Hey, Coach. Um, I have two questions uh, for you. Uh, the first one is now that you guys are out of the race, what are you guys playing for? What do you, what do you tell, you know, the guys as far as the motivation for, you know, the next two weeks? My second question to you is from a recruiting perspective, uh, what are you telling these guys and, and when are you telling, what's your pitch now, um, you know, now that some of that you guys are out of the race as well? Well, I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, my, my focus has never been on a race. Uh, it's been on trying to be, be the best that we can be. And that's all I've ever talked to our players about. Um, we want to win championships here. At the University of Texas, that, that should be the goal. Uh, but our focus has to be on that process to get to that goal. And that's all I've ever talked about. All I've ever focused on was that. Um, and uh, that, that hasn't changed. You know, we're, I'm not, it, it, it's disappointing uh, that that goal is, is gone, but uh, the ultimate goal of playing the best that we can play is still there. And, and that's what we're, we're working towards. And, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's easy for everybody to focus on negatives. I'll focus on the positives. Okay. We lost three games. It sucks. Not, not what any of us wanted to do, but, if you look at uh, the last four years here at the University of Texas, there's been at least three losses or more every season. Okay, uh, I look at how competitive those games were. You know, we were a play or two away from winning every one of those games. I know the, the negative side of it that people want to focus on. Well, you were a play or two away from losing every one of them too. But you know, we could sit and, and, and debate that all day. So I'm looking at the positives. Uh, we're not far off from being where everybody wants us to be. We're very close. Uh, you know, if you looked at those three games that we lost, there are probably a handful of plays that could have determined the outcome differently uh, for us. And we'd, we'd sit here and have a different conversation. Um, and that's what I'm focused on. And, and uh, that's what I, uh, that's my message to our players. That's my message to recruits. And, and that's my focus is to continue to help us overcome those few plays that have prevented us from winning the games that uh, we need to win to get to where we all want to be. Bob, go ahead. You said me, John? Yeah, you're up. Sorry, just making sure. Um, Chris, you've been through this unfortunate side of, as a head coach, of rumors circulating your program about what's going to happen. How difficult is it on a head coach to keep the program together when all that stuff from the outside is, is kind of weighing down on you? Yeah, it, it's not easy um, because there are a lot of people in your organization that you're responsible for. And... Um, you know, you, you can only control your messaging, um, the, the assistant coaches and the people that you've hired and the support staff in your organization have to uh, be aligned with that messaging uh, to try to make sure that the player's mindset is in the right spot. Uh, but it's hard to control what's going on, uh, you know, in the academics, what's going on in the training room, what's going on in the, the, the training table. There's so many other, uh, you know, people that, that, that uh, can influence uh, the, the mindset of your players. That's what's difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, what I've learned is, is uh, you can either focus on the rumors or focus on continuing to work uh, at the job that you have, and that's to improve your players. And um, that's what I try to do. And I, and I know that's what Coach Herman's trying to do as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's not easy uh, because there's all kinds of things that are thrown at you when you don't win the games that people want you to win. Marcus, you're up. Hey, Chris, um, we've talked a lot about the linebackers this season. And, you know, it seems like DeMarvin Overshone is making more plays each week. Um, what aspect of his game has he improved on the most this year and, and what makes him just the, a great fit at linebacker? Yeah, I, I think he's improved all aspects. Um, you know, we, we've talked a lot about just uh, really how we've been playing with six defensive backs this year. Um, and we're trying to have been trying to develop a couple of them into more linebacker types like DeMarvion. And uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Some of our early uh, struggles defensively in stopping the run 
uh, was around, you know, those linebacker positions, the spur and will uh, linebacker positions, because they were new. And we were asking them to do something they'd never done before. Uh, well, as we've gone through the season and, and uh, through reps in practice and meeting time and game reps, they've uh, improved and they've improved a lot. And you can see the results of uh, our defense have improved because of that. And it'll only continue to go that, that way, uh, the more reps um, that they have and the more that they are developed. And, um, you know, I think just being able to process uh, his keys and, and react to his keys in the run game and the pass game, be able to, to, to stay in a good football position and use his hands and things like that, I think he's really improved on. Uh, and it's helped him be around the ball and, and make more plays. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, uh, I wonder what strikes you about Will Howard, the freshman quarterback K-State is playing, and do they they have 16 tight ends like Iowa State seem to have that uh, are almost interchangeable? Well, I, I know Will uh, quite well. Um, Will is from Eastern Pennsylvania, and uh, we recruited Will really hard at Rutgers. Um, he was uh, one of our top targets uh, at the quarterback position, so um, very, very familiar with Will. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm really happy for him and, and uh, um, in what he's been able to do as a true freshman. Um, you know, he's a great kid, uh, works really hard. He's intelligent. Uh, I think they've adjusted their offense to fit his skill set where he is as a true freshman. Uh, and I think he's had a heck of a year. Uh, he's tough. He's smart. Um, he's a competitor. And, and uh, you can see those things on film. And the tight ends? Uh, they've, they they've got a lot of them. You know, they've got uh, different styles. They've had some injuries there, uh, you know, as well. But, um, you know, they, they uh, use multiple tight ends, um, very similar to what Iowa State did. Um, and uh, they can have them in the box. They can have them uh, spread out. They, they'll block you. Um, they'll be receivers. So, you know, it, it, some of the same challenges that um, were presented to us from Iowa State's, you know, multiple tight end set, uh, these guys have the same thing. Uh, coaches kind of talked about wanting to get their players into rhythms. Um, I was wondering, what do you feel like it takes for you to be able to get into a play calling rhythm? Um, you know, kind of from a kind of from a press box standpoint. Yeah, uh, when you're in uh, best rhythm, um, I would say that it's when you're obviously moving the ball and staying ahead of schedule, and uh, and when you're anticipating things, uh, when you know your your call sheet down cold, to where you don't even have to look down at it. And uh, that's when that's when things are really clicking for you as a caller when you get a rhythm and and you can anticipate and stay ahead of things and stay two calls ahead. And uh, especially with tempo, being able to stay on schedule and then anticipating, you know, sometimes there's a there's a play on the on the 30 yard line. That's, you know, boom, when that hits it, you're ready for it. And, and there's a play on the 10 yard line when that hits it, you're ready for it and that sort of thing. So those those are all the things that make you click as a caller. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, uh, have you and Tom had any discussion at all about maybe uh, playing a Hudson card or a Casey Thompson, uh, you know, even a series or two these last two games to help further along their development? Yeah, no, we have not. Um, I understand how how there could be, uh, you know, a lot of benefit to, towards that. But, you know, we, we got to win these these ball games and and, uh, you know, Sam's our guy and uh, we're giving him the reps and we're going to give him the, the best chance to make the most out of a, of a great career and finish this thing strong. And uh, on uh, Brennan Eagles, uh, you know, there's been whispered that he might would opt out. Do you think he's good to go? And where do you see his development this year? Well, he's, he's really done a great job this year. And I think he would benefit greatly um, by coming back and, and continuing to uh, learn the game of football. And there's a lot more he can do. And if you think about his draft status and, and what he can do to increase that from now um, in, 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 in 12 months, what will that look like? To me, that's millions of dollars at stake. Um, that could be the difference between, a, I don't know where he's projected, and I don't mean to be off by, by saying this, but that could be the difference between being a, a fourth round pick and a, and a, and a first round pick. That's significant money. That's, you know, it's hard to get that amount of chunk. So to me, you have an opportunity. He's, you know, he's good enough. There's no question. Um, but there's still a lot of development that has to happen. Um, this offense will provide him that skill set. Uh, we will increase the amount 
uh, his volume, his workload, his inventory, so to speak, as he continues to learn and be an expert within this offense. And, and he will be able to be uh, more articulate when he's in front of the GMs, when he's in front of those offensive coordinators getting interviewed, he will be that much well-versed and be that much more ready. And, and that will help him. And that's a, that's a, sometimes a significant amount of money. And really you only get one chance in your life as an athlete to make that amount of money and you want to maximize that, you know, you do. And, and I think that's very important for him to realize. And, and uh, you know, there's a time for those conversations and um, you know, there's no indications right now that Brennan is, is thinking about anything, but playing football, the kid practices his butt off. Uh, I love his enthusiasm. He's all in and uh, he's a very emotional guy, but he is, you know what? He has been all in this season and I love the kid. And uh, he has improved and he will continue to improve. And um, I, I think the world of him. Bob, go ahead. Mike, just going back to the quarterback position for a minute. Can you, I know you could probably talk about this for hours, but can you touch a little bit on what positives you're seeing from, from Hudson, Casey, and Jaquindon and just how that, you know, shakes out moving forward? Yeah, the positives is uh, I see Casey as being one of those guys that is uh, very, um, He's an expert at preparing. Um, he's really, really good at being in that film room and making sure that he's assignment sound and everything. He prepares like the starter without being the starter. That, and that's the hardest job in football is to actually prepare with the sense of urgency that you are the guy and you're a snap away from that. And, and um, some guys don't have that urgency because they're maybe they're into their feelings or, you know, they just feel defeated and, they don't have that, you know, when I get my chance, you know, I'm going to maximize that opportunity. Some guys are aware of how, how urgent that is. And some guys aren't, we stress it, but it still is up to them at the end of the day. He has that not to say that Hudson or Jaquindon doesn't, but he takes it to a different level and his uh, conscientiousness, um, the, the feedback he gives to me, to, to Sam, um, it's much appreciated. Uh, he's a very heady kid. That's uh, he's a very thoughtful person. He's got a great heart and uh, very willing. And I can't wait to see him execute when he gets his opportunity. Hudson, um, he's still learning the game. Um, he makes silly mistakes um, that are that are no nos and he's getting better at that. Uh, but he'll also make plays that make you go. Wow, he's uh, he's a special talent. There's no question about it. And so is Jaquindon. jaquindon has got a very, very strong arm. I think it's, you know, He's got to get that thing registered downtown, man. It's a lethal weapon, baby. He can rip it now. And, and he's, he's got a lot to learn. Um, he hasn't been at it as long as the other guys. So we got to catch it. It's going to be a big off season with, with myself, Hudson and Jaquin and sitting down more one-on-one -on -one film session, really cracking it open, see how they process, learn how they learn a little bit better. So I can try to adapt to their learning styles. And uh, that'll be very, very important. But, Again, all in, you know, Jaquinnan's doing better job transforming his body in a weight room. He's got a lot of work to do there, and he's, he's done a great job so far, but he can get a lot stronger. And, um, boy, he's, he's got all the tools. So that, that, that room is very bright, and uh, I appreciate all those young men because they're at the end of the day, that, that's not easy. When, when you're dealing with that much talent in the room, uh, to be great competitors, but more importantly, to be great – teammates uh to have that i'm blessed and uh, you got to really thank their high school coaches you know they've done a great job with those guys uh developing them and obviously they were raised um in their families the right way as well you don't just get values like that by being here for two months and learning the culture it's established from a lifetime of uh you know high, uh, gra grade school coaches junior junior uh junior high coaches high school coaches and their parents deserve a lot of credit those kids are all stars Jake, you're up. Yeah, Mike, one more on uh, Brennan. We've seen him be a big play threat in the past and then kind of disappear in some other games. And you talked about the development that still needs to take place. What in your eyes is going to make him a consistent threat every single game for this offense? Well, I think consistently getting off the ball and, and uh, you know, technique, technique, technique. Um, not everybody, everybody plays the same coverage. You know, not everybody's playing press man. 
Um, not everybody's playing, you know, cover two. So it all is dependent and, and relative to the game plan and who we're playing against. But it's not just one thing. I think it's, it's, it's not just him. It's everybody on this offense has to continue to learn, has to get better at, at technique. Um, to, so I don't, I don't want this to sound like it's all on Eagles, you know, that he's the only guy that needs to develop. Excuse me. Heck, it's all of our guys. And, uh, you know, they will and the effort's there. And, um, you know, more reps, it's like playing the piano. The, the more reps, the more time spent, the more you're going to be a master of, of your craft. And, and you, look at, you look at so many players at the highest level, and they might not be the fastest, and they might not be the strongest, but they're the smartest, they're the most skilled. So when we talk about when we first came here, we want to be a tough, smart, and skilled offense. And, and in order to get that skill down, you've got to – it's time. It's reps after rep after rep. And um, that's what we have to continue to do, all of us, including Brennan. Marcus, go ahead. Hey, Mike, um, just talking about Sam Cosme and, um, you know, obviously he won't be playing the final two games of the year. Um, what does he add – as a left tackle that is going to be the most difficult to replace? And is there any sense of worry at all with, you know, having to play potentially a couple young offensive linemen in these final two games? So, what you know, I don't want to talk about a guy that's not going to really be here for us. So, you know, he's a first-round draft pick. What does he add? First-round draft pick ability, you know. What does that tell you? That's a, that's a, that's a big deal. But here, here's, the, here's the thing. What a tremendous opportunity this presents for other guys. And, and I'll tell you, it, th those, those guys that are going to, you know, fill in for Sam um, practiced their butts off yesterday and came out with an emotional charge, uh, a lot of juice. And to me, that's what competition's all about. And for our guys to come out and practice with the amount of urgency that they did on Tuesday, um, even Sunday, um, you know, when, when it was the most hard, you know, when we talk about there's two things, there's two things that you can do. You, you can get better or you, or you can, you know what, you can gear it down. There's two things you can do. And that's all you can. It's either one or the other. And that's life. And, and, that's, how, and that's how it's going. So you could lay in bed and you can dread that, you know, that sick feeling, that pit. And it's going to happen to everybody that lays it on the line. If you've ever competed and stepped into the arena, you know what I mean? And if you lay it on the line, you come up short and your dreams get crushed. It makes it really, really hard. So you got two things that you can do. And those guys have stepped up. I'm proud of them. And uh, it's a joy to coach here because of those players' attitudes and their intensity and their focus and their desire to get better. Got two, time for two last ones. We'll start with Steven. Yeah, Coach. Uh, you went mute there, Steven. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, Coach, uh, I just want to ask you a little bit more about uh, about the quarterback position, specifically uh, Casey Thompson. I want to know where you feel like he's at in his development right now. And if something were to happen where he was needed to be inserted into the game, um, do you have enough confidence in, in him to, to really just let it rip? Yeah, we wouldn't hold anything back. We have tremendous confidence in him. We would stay with the game plan and call everything that we would call with Sam. Um, he's a capable thrower, capable runner. And, uh, you know, where, where he stands right now is uh, he practices extremely long. So it's all about evaluation. So we evaluate every practice. And, uh, you know, he's had, uh, you know, a, a steady improvement in his game and uh, has shown signs that, um, you know, we would be very productive with him in the game. So we would have no hesitation and call his number and let it rip, like you say.